Welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. With everyone at VCF Midwest this weekend, I thought I'd take a look at something a little less retro. A Windows XP desktop that fits in the palm of your hand. It's the answer to a question no one seems to have asked. Well, no one except me. I asked it. Does an Ion make a perfect stealth XP gaming machine? Come along with me as I attempt to answer that question. All set? Bottoms up. Let's start with the basics. The NVIDIA ION was a short-lived home theater PC and netbook platform launched by NVIDIA at the tail end of 2008, with a second generation launched in 2010. Development of the platform ground quietly to a halt soon after that, however, as interest in Atom-powered netbooks began to wane in late 2010. So what was ION? Well, for those two glorious and strange years, ION represented NVIDIA's attempt to hot-rod the Intel Atom. NVIDIA was still making motherboard chipsets at the time, and they were seeing some success in integrating their lower-end GPUs into the chipsets as all-in-one multimedia solutions. They even managed to get Apple on board for a couple of years. The first generation ION paired an early Atom CPU with NVIDIA's new at the time 9400M mobile chipset. As the name suggests, this integrated a G96 graphics core with 16 unified shaders, 8 texture mapping units, and 4 ROPs into a low power, low heat north bridge. It used system memory for the GPU and ran at 450MHz versus the desktop parts 550MHz. So, not exactly blistering performance. But that wasn't the point. The only alternative at the time for an Atom-based PC was Intel's graphics and media accelerator, most commonly found on their GMA945 Express chipset. Anyone who lived through the early Intel GMA era knows just how bad these early integrated graphics chipsets were, and those 16 unified shaders in the ION's GPU started looking like a Formula One car comparatively. ION's biggest claim to fame at this time was its ability to decode H.264 HD video in hardware on the integrated GPU, freeing the woefully underpowered Atom CPU from performing this task. This not only lowered power consumption during video playback, but it also dramatically increased performance, allowing the Atom to smoothly play back 1080p Blu-ray content for the first time. If you had the right drivers. Driver issues plagued the platform from the outset, and rumors swirled of a rushed launch from the first generation as chipset memory controller bugs cropped up in early examples of the ION. Still, interest in the platform was pretty strong, despite the netbook market starting to show signs of cooling off. 2010 saw the release of the second generation ION, although at this point it was really just a branding exercise, as the platform architecture had shifted considerably and now consisted of a cut down GT305M laptop GPU using the GT218 core, paired with Intel's newest Atom chipset, the NM10. 2010 also saw the launch of Apple's iPad, and that fairly rapidly crushed the netbook market, with netbooks barely being even mentioned by 2012. So where does that leave the ION today? Well, the platform itself isn't exactly known for being powerful. In fact, a number of manufacturers offered extremely popular free downgrades to Windows XP on their brand new Atom-powered netbooks because Windows 7 was just frequently too demanding of an operating system for these machines. So running modern software on it, while technically possible, it does meet the minimum requirements for Windows 10 after all, it doesn't seem like it's really practical. That's where my opening question comes in. With so many original buyers of Atom-powered PCs downgrading their machines to Windows XP for better performance, is that where this platform's sweet spot lies? If I want to put together an XP build, do I really need a huge, power-hungry, heat-spewing, fan-noise-belting Pentium 4 or Athlon XP Mega PC? Or can I use a basically silent mobile PC platform from the Windows 7 era that just so happens to have XP drivers available for it? Can you hear it? It's on right now. I figured the easiest way to answer this question was to tackle it head on. Buy an ION, throw XP on it, install some games on it, and see how it performs. 
I hunted around on eBay for a while and ended up snagging a pretty good deal on this Asus AT5 Ion Ti Deluxe. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? A deluxe, in this case, means they removed features. Most notably, the ATX power connector in favor of a 12-volt barrel jack in the corner of the I.O. plate just under the antenna connector for the integrated Wi-Fi. This board, with its alphabet soup name, is a second-generation ION board. It pairs an Atom D525 dual-core hyper-threaded Pineview Atom with a GT218 mobile Tesla GPU with 512 megs of dedicated DDR3 RAM and a core clock speed of 535 MHz. Still not amazing, but significantly faster than the older 9400M. Other interesting features include onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as an X4 PCI Express slot with a notch cut in the end, tantalizingly tempting the adventurous to torture the tiny atom with far too much GPU horsepower. Maybe one day. I wasn't expecting a miracle from this little machine, but the early results I ended up getting were interesting enough that I also threw together my Athlon XP testbed with a circa 2003 CPU and GPU to see how well the little mobile platform compares to its XP-optimized, heat-belching cousin. I tried out 12 games and demos that didn't require Steam. Installing Steam and getting it to run on XP in this day and age is an endeavor all and of itself, and I didn't have time to do it for this video, but I will revisit it in the future. It's shown on the desktop here, but I cut Descent 3 from the list because it turns out uh, it's not fun. I also ran 3D Mark 2000, 2001 SE, and 2003 on both systems to see how they scored, and this is when I realized that I was going to be limited somewhat by the ION's graphics drivers. I'm already starting with the chipset from 2010, and in order to get the audio out through the board's HDMI port to work, I needed to update the driver, and after trying several revisions, I settled on Forceware 270.61, which is from mid-2011. So we'll get to the benchmarks in a moment, but first I want to show you a few raw gameplay snippets so you can get a feel for what it's like to actually game on this machine. I was impressed by its performance most of the time, and I think you will be too. And yes, I know exactly what icon you're looking at on that desktop, and relax, we'll get there. I will answer that question that I know you're asking. Patience. I tease a lot of things in the backgrounds of my videos, but that is not a tease. I will answer it in just a minute. Okay? Game on. Man, did you see that shot? Well, you're glad I got this inside on me, aren't you? Oh, what's that stand? Trophy. 
I'm over here! You stupid headless freaks! Blistering performance is a pretty apt description of the ion. Not bad, but not amazing. However, if we flip over to the full benchmark results here, you can see that the system's performance is actually more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Sure, it trails the Athlon in nearly every Cayman benchmark tested, however, if you look at the results for 3D Mark and Morrowind, you can see that the system really starts to pick up when pixel shading is emphasized. This makes sense as the ION's GPU is based around NVIDIA's Tesla unified shader processors versus the Radeon's fixed function RV350 core. Okay, so let's talk about these numbers. For the ION, since I was able to connect it directly to, to my capture card and pass the signal through to my 4K monitor, I tried to run as many of these games at 720p as I could, and that included looking up resolution and widescreen hacks for a lot of them. I got most of them to do it, with the exception of the following. Evil Genius didn't recognize the ion and wouldn't scale past 1024 by 768 Half-Life Uplink also did the same thing. Uh, I ran American Mickey's Alice, the demo, at 1280x1024, and Dungeon Keeper 2 and Descent 3 aren't on the board because, well, as I mentioned with Descent 3, I started testing it and it turns out it's not fun. And the copy of Dungeon Keeper 2 that I have is the GOG version, which uses a glide wrapper and doesn't perform well on either machine. Also, since it's a glide wrapper, Fraps can't measure its frame rate, so I'll save this game for my actual Voodoo machines. Oh, and Neverwinter Nights ran faster on the Ion at 1080p than it did at 720p, so I ran it at 1080p. For the Athlon, since I was limited to my 4x3 monitor and my VGA capture setup, I picked a resolution that was as close to 720p as I could, 1152x864. That ends up being slightly more pixels per frame than 720p, but not much. 995,000 versus 992,000. Again, I ran Alice at 1280x1024 and Evil Genius at 1024x768 to match the Ion. So, looking at these numbers, I think the ION makes a fair case at being an XP gaming machine. Again, it's not exactly blistering performance, but for something that's this small and this quiet, 80% of the speed of a 9800 is pretty good in my book. 
Even in a game where it gets really trounced by the Athlon like Serious Sam, it's not exactly unplayable. It's pretty enjoyable, in fact. I'll leave these results up on the screen for a bit so you can take a pause and take a closer look if you'd like. But there is one more thing. These tests and numbers are all well and good, but can it run Crisis? Yes. Asterisk. Testing at 720p low, the results are a not terribly encouraging 22 FPS average crawling across this beach scene. That doesn't bode well for later in the game when there's more foliage and more shaders. However, the Athlon at 1152 by 864 fares worse. It returns a paltry 18 FPS at low settings, and there's one more unkindest cut for our Intrepid 9800 Pro. Crisis won't let it run at higher than low settings. The Ion can be pushed all the way up to high, which yields a slideshow like 7 frames per second, so maybe this is for the best. And the Ion will return mid-30s at 800 by 600 with low settings, which is almost approaching playable. The Radeon provides us with 29 FPS in this scenario. So I guess this really just proves that when running a late XP early Vista game sponsored by NVIDIA competing with NVIDIA hardware from 2010, the high-end GPU architected in 2002 by ATI isn't quite as fast. Anyway, that's it for this first look at the NVIDIA ION. I think it's kind of a little redemption arc for the mini PC. So maligned for so many years, but it turns out that its forte was being a retro PC all along. If you found this interesting, please subscribe, as I have some warranty voiding and hopefully not magic smoke releasing testing planned for this little machine in the near future. Once again, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next installment of Jumper Block Retro Tech, here on Tech Ambrosia. Have a good night.